Wang Yangming's descent from Zhu Xi. Hello, this is Dr. Bing Song at Washington College to teach Ruism, global philosophies, and religions. We have used one session to introduce the thought of Zhu Xi as the reservoir of the Dao Xue movement. As explained in that session, the term reservoir means that not only the thought of Dao Xue prior to Zhu Xi confluence into him, but that later thinkers may disagree with him after learning him. Therefore, in this session, we'll introduce the thought of Wang Yangming, a major descent from Zhu Xi in the later Dao Xue movement. A major historical context to understand the rising of Wang Yangming's thought is that since being endorsed officially by Yuan Dynasty, Zhu Xi's philosophy, which emphasizes the intellectual investigation and analytic analysis of the principles Li, of things and affairs, had been misused by many Ru letter writers as an excuse of pedantry and formalism just for tactically making it through the civil examination. This engendered strong critiques from devoted Ru practitioners, such as Wang Yangming. Moreover, after the defeat of Song Dynasty by the nomadic Mongols, the imperial regime became increasingly authoritarian, and the royal families headed by mercurial emperors were also more and more reluctant to accept the co-governing role of Ru governmental officials. Since the top-down approach of relying upon emperor's support to realize Ruism being shut down, Ru activists had to pave an alternative path from the bottom up, capable of propagating Ruism extensively among commoners. Wang Yangming advocates the attainment of the conscientious knowing, Liangzhi, an innate intuitive awareness of morality as the sole and final pursuit of individual self-cultivation, and hence furnishes a new foundation for the changing ethos in the conclusive stage of the Dao Xue movement. No descent of Wang Yangming from Zhu Xi is more visible than their varying interpretations of the spiritual steps of self-cultivation in the Great Learning. For Zhu Xi, whether one is able to authenticate their intentions so as to rectify their heart-mind depends upon a cumulative process of investigating things to attain the knowledge of principles. The dimension of the heart-mind which complies with the principles comprises the innately good human nature endowed by Tian, whereas the one of the heart-mind, which does not entirely abide by principles, is considered as human feelings, which include sensations, emotions, desires, and other embodied human dispositions. Therefore, a dictum of Zhu Xi's philosophy is, quote, the heart-mind encompasses human nature and feelings. Quote, Xin tong xin qing. Self-cultivation is accordingly characterized as a process of perfecting human feelings via cumulatively investigating things so as to preserve the good human nature rooted in the cosmic principle of Tian. Nevertheless, for Wang, the authentication of intentions does not rest upon this outwardly oriented process of investigating principles of things. Traditional rule virtues such as humanness, righteousness, ritual propriety, and wisdom are thought of by Wang Yangming as being inherent to the heart-mind. Consequently, the principles of these virtues, which speak to the ways how individuals co-flourish in nurturing human relationships, integral to a sustainable civilization, are also inherent to the heart-mind. Instead of considering the heart-mind as encompassing the nature and the feelings, 
of which only the nature abides by principle. Wang insisted that quote, the heart mind is the principle. Quote, Xin Ji Li. And quote, no principle outside the heart mind. Xin Wai Wu Li. Quote, Zhu Xi's insistence upon the necessity of investigating principles of things leads to his tendency of emphasizing the temporary priority of knowledge over action. However, since he advocates no principle outside the heart mind, Wang exhausts quote, the union of knowledge and action, zhi xing he yi, quote, which implies that the sheer awareness towards a concrete case of being moral leads immediately to one's attitude of affirming as well as the action of executing it. For instance, if one merely knows the virtue of filiality xiao towards their parents without actually doing anything about it, this is for Wang not a genuine kind of moral knowledge. In the more mature states of his thought, Wang furthermore developed the idea of genuine moral knowledge into one of conscientious knowing, liang zhi, and pivoted his entire moral philosophy upon the action of attaining conscientious knowing, zhi liang zhi. In other words, Wang believes that there is an innate dimension of the human heart-mind which provides individuals with spontaneous and infallible moral intuitions to varying situations. Rather than construing zhi zhi in the great learning as attaining the knowledge of principles which comes after investigating things, ge wu, Wang interprets zhi zhi as attaining conscientious knowing and ge wu as rectifying things. Wang claims that the primary step of self-cultivation should be to recover one's innate conscientious knowing, which does not derive from empirical knowledge of the outside world, and then to rectify outward things from evil to good using the standard of moral intuitions furnished by the conscientious knowing. In the second before the last year of his life, Wang developed a four-sentence teaching, Si Ju Jiao, which crystallizes all the aforementioned major propositions of Wang's moral philosophy, and has engendered riveting debates and controversies among later Ru thinkers. Wang says, quote, The fundamental state of heart-mind is neither good nor evil. There are good and evil when intentions are aroused. The conscientious knowing knows good and evil, doing good and eliminating evil is to rectify things. Quote. An exegesis is furnished as follows. The term xin ti in the first sentence reminds a among this contemplative practice of oceanic vital energy, conducive to the unitary feeling of one body with the entire universe and signifies the ontological bond of humanity with the Tian. The fundamental state of human existence is neither good nor evil, because Tian has its mysterious power to have everything exist and change together in the broadest cosmic scale. From the perspective of Tian, any created thing is ipso facto good, since it manifests Tian's sublime creativity by default. This sort of goodness, characterized by Wang also as utterly good, zhi shan, has no dialectical relationship with evil, and is thus non-dualist par excellence. More importantly, if the fundamental state of heart-mind endowed by Tian is well maintained, the way one does good and eliminates evil in the human world would be just as spontaneous and non-contrived as how Tian's creativity proceeds in the cosmic realm. Such a naturally flowing state of being moral appears to be, quote, as if there is neither good nor evil, quote. Wang highlights this ideal state of morality in order to prevent humans from being mired into dualistic or oppositional moralist wars in which they may fight each other using one limited perception of goodness against another. 
one construes the e in the second sentence as the arousal of hot mind, namely the affective reaction of hot mind to external things, such as the feelings of love towards benefits and of hate towards harm. Therefore, it means intentions. One's intentions towards concrete things could be good and evil. Because it is not the case that every intention complies with the utter goodness of Tian's all-encompassing and spontaneous creativity, and is able to respond to things appropriately, so as to create evolving harmonies in the human world. Instead, one's habitual dispositions, xi qi, and selfish desires, si yu. Obscure the original good state of heart mind, and force them to intend benefits and avoid harms, not according to the cosmic principle of Tian, but per their possessive, divisive, and combative needs. One's perceptions and pursuits of good and evil would consequently lose the non-dualist nature of the fundamental state of heart mind. And inevitably lead to disharmonies in society. However, despite the potential of intentions to go astray from the fundamental state of heart and mind, there always remains a consciousness integral to the state, which can pull back the strayed intentions and reorient them towards the right path. One terms the consciousness as conscience knowing, liang zhi, and believes it has an innate epistemic ability of knowing morals, as stated in the third sentence. Since liang zhi belongs to the fundamental state of heart mind, continuous with the tense creativity, moral judgments made by liang zhi are also spontaneous and natural, as one says, the heart mind can naturally know. As one naturally knows to be commiserate with a baby about to fall into a well, this is what I mean by conscience knowing. Quote. Finally, since the Liang Zhi spontaneously and perfectly knows good and evil, one just needs to invest the efforts maintaining it while rectifying things into good, per the injunction of Liang Zhi. Among the four sentences, the first one has been the most controversial, because devoted Ru after Wang opposed the seemingly Buddhist language, used which Wang described the cosmic root of human nature as with no good no evil. Ru scholars more prone to Zhu Xi's thought also re-emphasize the role of empirical knowledge in one's moral pursuit, and hence disapprove. Of the apparently anti-intellectual moral intuitionism hinted by Wang's teaching of Liang Zhi, the origin of evil as rooted in one's selfish desires is also frequently challenged, since this desire, as being integral to human heart mind, are also supposed to be manifestations of the utterly good cosmic creativity power of Tian. In historical hindsight. Wang Yangming's four-sentence teaching is a potent catalyst for the conclusive stage of Dao Xue movement, which has continually stimulated the innovation of Zhu thought in its modern and contemporary forms.